Hey everyone, Evan from Permission to Game here, wanting to talk to you today about what makes sense in 2020 as far as your Nintendo Switch from a grip perspective. Now, there's a lot of great grips out there and there's a lot of good things to make your, your Switch more portable. I mean, the Switch is kind of supposed to be portable, right? So, what makes sense here in 2020? Now, everybody's already reviewed all the big grips. There's tons of options out there on Amazon and eBay, you know, over at your local store. But doesn't what actually should you be buying? What should you really spend your hard-earned money on? Now, before we get to that, I just wanted to big, make a huge shout out to our sponsor of today's video, High Altitude Apparel. Now, if you guys like anything Star Wars, anything beer, anything dad or millennial related, they've got everything you need from the shirt designs. Like this is a pretty dope design right here. I mean, we got the Death Star coming up over the mountains. They've got the Millennium Falcon on a Colorado flag. All sorts of things that you are gonna love from a beer aspect to a Star Wars aspect, anything you want. Now, if you have some cool designs too that maybe you want printed, they do it for you as well. So check them, oh, there comes another one, woohoo! So check this out, this one's the Colorado flag design. Like, holy smokes, that is cool. Millennium Falcon, Colorado flag. We got ourselves here. What is that name? The, what? Death Star again, over the mountains. Can't go wrong. And so if any of you that have seen the movie lately, you're gonna love it. You're gonna wanna wear this if you haven't yet to the movie and to the upcoming events and, and specials this year. So shout out highaltitudeapparel.com, check them out. Save today and you're gonna love it. So back to the fact that we need to understand how are we gonna actually handle our switch? Now, the cool part is I'm actually going on a flight this afternoon, so I'm gonna bring my new grip with me. I'm gonna experience it on the plane. It's gonna be wonderful. Now, at the end of the day, the Nintendo did an amazing job designing this thing. I mean, from a design aspect, from an aesthetic aspect, everything about the Switch is near perfect. It's what we as gamers have always wanted in a really true, good quality, portable handheld. The problem is, in an effort to design to aesthetics and to, des to design to what everybody may want or feel or need, we lose out on opportunities and comfort especially. I mean. My hands are, I wouldn't say big hands, but they're large enough to where when I'm playing, at first this kind of grip is okay for 10, 15 minutes, but after a point, my hands start cramping. I can't quite get to the buttons. You know, my thumb doesn't get to the D-pad very easily. It just doesn't make sense. And on top of that, I wish I could say, you know, the Switch is meant to be docked. It's also meant to go on the go. I'm just find myself more often than not playing in handheld mode. You know, it, it reminds me of my old Game Boy days when I had the color and, you know, Pokemon Red and Blue and trading with my brother. But it doesn't make sense if you're going to play all the time in a handheld mode to just play it like Nintendo built it. So there's tons of options out there for you. You got cases, you've got grips, you've got add-ons, you know, full-on controllers that snap into the sides that create a new grip experience. But when it comes down to it, what actually makes sense. So today I've got a couple options available to you. And first off, we're gonna start with the first and simple easy go-to method. We got Skull & Co. Now, again, these are brands that have already been talked about. Don't get me wrong, everybody has heard them, everybody's done reviews, we all know that these are some of the best you could buy on the market. And why am I going back to it today? Because they still remain that way. Nobody has yet to build something else that's gonna compete with what Skull & Co. and Satisfy have available for you. But here with Skull & Co, you've got a complete grip and case assembly. Like, the switch just simply snaps right into there. It's actually a little bit difficult, I found, because I've actually owned both of these, to, to yeah, kind of use it on a daily basis. Now again, I still like to put my switch in dock mode, so the cool part is the Skull & Co does claim that you can dock your switch with the case completely attached into the system. But, my problem is, and I get a way too finicky about my stuff, is that it's way too snug in, that, in, in the dock itself. I'm worried that the dock is gonna break. I'm worried that the dock is gonna scratch the heck out of my screen, even though I have a screen protector on there. And because I have a glass screen protector, it still makes it even more snug. So, I unfortunately had to get rid of this Colin Co. Um, you may ask why I still have this. It's actually Aaron's. Um, he is, un unfortunately, is not able to make it today, but, he loves this thing, loves it to death, uses it all the time, but has not tried out the other grip I have for you. But before we jump to the other grip, there are some benefits to the Skull & Co. It does kind of give you a full, you know, full body protection. 
It's not, as far as a drop goes, it's not gonna protect you from drops, maybe a little bit, but for the most part, it's just there to kind of be a, a minor surface kind of protection system. Now, the only downside is they've got, their buttons are covered up here with their own kind of trigger covers and whatnot. Looks cool, feels great at first, but if you don't put the case in, or I should say when you don't put the switch in exactly right, it doesn't fit. The buttons don't click, they get stuck, it gets in the way. Like, I was at the point where I almost cut my buttons out, that way I could access the actual buttons on the switch. The other downside, and the main reason I decided to go away from the Skull & Co grip, is that even with three different options, you can sit here, you can pop off, and you can remove the actual grips, you can change the colors. They've got three different actual grip styles if you don't like this like trigger one. The reason I got rid of it is as you're trying to remove the switch to put it into the dock or, put it, or use it in other fashions or take the Joy-Cons off, it puts in a lot of extra strain on the Joy-Cons as you're pushing it out. Because the system is nice and flexible, you almost in a sense have to push from the Joy-Con or push from the system itself to pop it back out of the case. And the extra kind of flex on the, on the Joy-Cons themselves really made me nervous because I want my system to last. I like keeping my electronics as pristine as possible. So, after literally a weekend, I took it on vacation. After a whole use of it over about a week's vacation, I decided as much as I love it, I gotta return it. Now, the cool part is it did come with a really nice case. I could put the switch, the grip, and most everything I needed for a travel aspect into the case. So there was some benefits to it, but at the end of the day, not my choice. Could not live with it. So let's put it aside. Now, the next option I have for you is is, again, it's already been reviewed, everybody loves it, I love it, I'm going to it because it is the one that until something else comes out that's better, we need to, you know, as consumers, I would highly advise sticking to in 2020, and that is the Satisfy Grip. Wait, this is a case, not a grip. You're right, because they offer so many different options to purchase their grip. I chose to go with the Pro Grip, with the case and all that jazz that way, you know, it's a little bit on the thick side, but that way I could carry more with me, especially in a family sense, to take that, have a good time, and have the essentials that I needed on my vacation. So the grip itself seems simple. But before we get to the actual grip, I wanna show you what the case comes with. So as we open up the case here, you know, it's, it's relatively large. The cool part is they claim that you could drop this off a bridge and it would still protect your system. I am not going to do that because that is just crazy, but it is really cool to see that their case itself is, in a sense, extremely durable. Um, I really like the design they did. This is the, the Pro 2, the second version, the second iteration of the Switch Grip itself, of uh, the Satisfy Grip. Um, overall, they did a great job with the redesign. It's a cloth face now instead of the kind of like smooth face that they had before, the leathery face. Um, it's got a nice look to it. I really like the embossment of their logo, the treatment of the zipper. Overall, this case for their larger case is actually extremely nice. Um, as we open it up here, you can see on the inside, there's a lot of great options. There's an extremely large zipper pouch at the top here. And actually, as you can probably see, I've already got inside of it two extra Joy-Cons. That way when we're traveling, I've got extra stuff. That way the family can play if we're playing some uh, you know, Super Smash, some Mario Kart. If I don't, they still fit in here nicely. It comes with additional cabling. I've got my, uh, what are these called, the bumpers. I've got additional cabling. It also comes with some cool little thumb grips. I don't normally use these. I might try putting them on, just seeing if it helps with the comfort and overall playability. They claim that it helps make it so that the, the grip itself is more fine-tuned as you're playing. I don't see any benefit to a, a what is that, a quarter of an inch rubber sticking up on top, so I will try it. Probably not, though. And it comes with this really cool, like, again, because I have extra Joy-Cons, it comes with this really cool attachment where I can then add the Joy-Con and make my own kind of, we'll call it travel case. This is my own little travel grip. It's teeny. It works, but it, it, it's perfect for what you need. It's, it's, it's really cool. So, at the end of the day, I got a lot for what I paid. I mean, this whole setup here with the grip is just shy of just about 50 bucks on Amazon. 
I mean, you can get the grip by itself. It's around $20, a little bit more. You can get a slim version, which actually I'm probably gonna buy the slim case as well. That way I've got options while I'm traveling because I am finding that even though this is perfect for carrying everything, it is gets a little bulky in my bag. But, I mean, look at this thing. This is adorable. I would play on this all day on vacation. Probably not a regular, but this is cool. And it makes a nice way to hold my Joy-Cons, the extra Joy-Cons, together properly within the case. So, cool. Now on top of that, I'm not I'm a, I'm huge into, you know, digital downloads. I know you pay more or you don't get the resale value, but I don't necessarily like carrying around game cartridges. But for those of you who do like physical releases, they've got plenty of slots for physical releases, two little trays itself. What is that? One, two, three, four, five. So we got 20 different spots here, along with additional zipper pouches if you want to put some more SD cards. I advise just buying a really big SD card instead of transferring data back and forth between multiple ones. Um, and then at the bottom here, the cool part is, it doesn't fit, cool, maybe cool and bad, I don't know. It doesn't fit the charger block. I was kind of a little disappointed. Like, at first, this is extremely deep. Like, I figured I could probably fit the charger block in here. And when I did, and I zipped it up, and I closed it, it wouldn't close. So a little disappointed there, but Satisfy has given you the option to actually put a battery pack below here. Now, again, this review's already been done. Everybody already knows you can do this. I'm just hyping on the fact that this is still relevant and why we should buy it today. Battery pack can go here. With a size battery pack you could put in, you could charge your switch for days. I mean, some people are saying with the larger ones, you can do three, four different chargers on the switch before actually having to recharge the battery pack. So I get it, you don't need the power cord. You're not gonna take the dock in this, so works perfect. On top of that, the base is a nice smooth velour, you know, velour, velour. We haven't had velour these days in a long time, but it makes for a cool look. I've only had the case here for a couple weeks, so I'm worried that it is gonna get a little bit dirty, especially with kids, it may get grimy, but overall, it looks great. So, with that being said, let's actually talk about the grip itself. The grip, they made a bunch of changes. So this is actually the second rendition of, the, of their original, you know, Switch Grip Pro. I mean, that's what they kind of call it. They have a light version as well, so if you have a light, you can also get this famous grip. I actually like the treatment they did with the light a little bit better, but overall, this is an extremely comfortable grip. So, at first, I really liked the Skullico. I liked the way it felt in my hands. The only thing I realized after playing with the Satisfy, and again, I'll get more to the Satisfy in a second, is that the Skullico didn't provide me with a wraparound kind of feature. I still had to keep my thumbs to the outside, I still had to make it so that it didn't feel like it was gonna fall out of my hands. But when I'm actually holding the grip and I'm holding the satisfied grip, there's a huge difference to the way it actually feels in your hands. It may be a little bit bigger, it may be a little bit bulkier, but my hand has the ability to wrap around. I can play in bed looking up at it, I can hold it down low. Overall, the grip itself is extremely satisfying, right? Um, so with that being said, they made a few updates to their second edition, and there's a few things that I think they should have done as well. But they've added extra of these rubber grips, so as you slide the switch in, it provides more cushioning, so you're not relying on the hard plastic of the grip itself to give cushion. It, it, the rubber itself will leave less marks, less damage, less wear and tear to your switch. And it makes it easier to take on and off. Now, that was the main reason, like I told you guys before, the Skull Co. didn't work. I couldn't take it out easily or comfortably, to my satisfaction, to put in the dock, to put in places where I didn't need the grip itself, where the Satisfied Grip gives me the ease of access to just pushing the switch out, sliding it in the dock, taking it to friends' places, whatever. And then with that being said, you know, I've got the ability now to have a more portable, more usable grip environment. But I don't want to take it out. I, only took, I literally have had it in this, in this grip until this video since the day I got it. So you guys are special enough that I took it out for you. But overall, they've done a great job designing this. The extra rubber also adds a little bit layer of air protection between the switch itself. When it's slid in, it adds for better cooling. It adds for better overall user experience. You can almost shake it in a sense. You don't have to feel like it's gonna slide out because in the previous designs, they only had two rubber spots versus, what is this, 20 now? So I highly recommend you decide for yourself what works better, the, the Skull & Co or the Satisfy. Now, continuing with the Satisfy, 
One of the things that makes it beneficial is that for people with larger hands and just the way Nintendo designed the Joy-Cons themselves, the Joy, how do I say this? The right Joy-Con with the fact that the joystick is lower and not above the buttons like the left one creates a uncomfortable way of using the actual Joy-Con itself. Now, it would be great if Nintendo partnered with and did some sort of licensed Joy-Con that switched it around so that the joystick was above and it was still official by Nintendo. That way I felt comfortable buying it because there's a lot of great options out there that I prefer not to purchase because of the fact that they are cheaper built aftermarket. But because of that design, because of the way they did the Joy-Con, Satisfy has changed the feel and actually has pushed out in a sense the right controller. Now this makes it easier for your thumb to actually get to it. Here, let me, let me put it in really quick. I'll show you, slide it down. So as you're sliding it, by the way, it's gonna be a little sticky, a little on the tougher side. Always push down by the Joy-Con itself, not the center. The reason for that is you don't wanna put any extra stress onto the actual locking mechanism of the Joy-Con. You want the stress itself to always be held within the item so that it's not putting it on that locking pin. But as you're in place here, overall, just gorgeous. The aesthetic of this is beautiful. When you're putting your left hand, your right hand in, my, I should say, the change of the grip moves your thumb downward and moves your elbow out. Now, I'll explain in a little bit some of the downsides of that, but it moves your hand outward as you wrap around the grip to get to that joystick a whole lot easier. And you can still access your ABXY buttons real easy. Immediately when I opened this up and put it on, I was like night and day difference. I busted out a couple games. I started playing for several hours to the point where my wife's like, hey, I'm turning the lights off. We got to go to bed. I loved this thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I loved the Skull & Co when I used it, but I fell in love immediately with the Satisfy Grip. It doesn't offer a lot of protection. It's not going to protect you from falls or bangs, but if you're looking for a primary way to play in a handheld mode, and actually be able to play for hours without feeling like you're breaking your hands, a Satisfy Grip is the way to go. With that being said, they have their nice branding on the side. There's a few things I would change on this. Like, the problem with the way they've designed the right grip, you should say, is it does push your elbow out. And I find myself wanting to pull my elbow back in, which pulls the switch at an angle. And over time, you don't, you don't realize it as you're playing, but once I stopped, I realized my switch is at like a 15, 10, 15 degree angle. And it's not a problem. I can still play fine, but I'm like, wait a minute here. Like I can still reach my thumbstick. It still feels great, but my, I want it to be straight. So if I can make some changes, I would love to see an option that's symmetrical. Now again, don't get rid of what they've done. I love the fact, this is again, amazing but provide a symmetrical option so the people that don't really care about the ergonomics standpoint and would prefer complete symmetry, it would provide that option to them. Also, I know you guys can't see it here, but these kickstands or little stands in general make for a great way to prop it up and play it on the go. Overall, I don't really ever find myself actually doing that, but the nice part is you could lay it on a table, you could get out other Joy-Cons like I've got in my case, and use them in a kind of a kickstand mode because we all know how terrible that kickstand is on the back of the Switch. Nintendo, come on, terrible idea. So with that being said, I would remove these. And the reason I would remove them is because I'm not actually using them that often. I always, for the most part, lay it flat, um, only for pictures. If you look at our Instagram page, am I actually docking it upright? But in general, these do help with stopping and, and positioning the switch, but you can make that happen through the grip itself. So these things, little kickstands, in my opinion, are just a waste. They take away from the look of the, of the overall aesthetics. I went with the black one because I didn't want to see these. Like they have other color options and there's special editions that come out, but the black one made sense to me because you don't see these little nubs stick off the bottom of your switch as easily. But overall, it's worth dealing with because of how comfortable and how reasonable this, this grip is to have. Now, I find myself even, I know this is terrible, but I find myself not letting my kids play because I love just the, holding it. I don't, I don't want to put it in the dock. I don't want to give it to them. I want to hold it myself. Overall, though, 
what does it come down to? What are you looking for? Are you looking to play in dock mode? Are you looking to play handheld? Are you looking to just find cool accessories to add to your setup? There's all sorts of reasons as to why you should own one of these two grips. And again, I'm always gonna defer to the Satisfy now that I've tried both of these. Now that I've had the opportunity to put both in hand and play for hours on end, the Satisfy just is my go-to. They both come with great cases. They both come with portability options. So what makes more sense? Now, like I said, they make a slim case of these. I'm gonna travel with this you know, today. So we'll see how it actually does on the flight. Um, I realized I had to change up my bag configuration like I normally do just to fit this massive case in it. So Satisfy does sell a slim option, which I'm probably gonna purchase because I like having that ability to just throw it in and go and not have to worry about anything else because if it's just me, I don't need the rest of the accessories. So at the end of the day, until something better comes out, until somebody has other options, which there are, there's other stuff that's cheaper, there's other stuff that is more protective, there's other stuff that provides battery charging capabilities, but is that needed? Is that really what you need? You wanna just make this one massive console you're trying to carry around an Xbox you know, with a screen attached to it? No, not really, this, it's meant, the Switch itself is meant to give you the options between playing on TV, playing on the go, playing with friends. And the Satisfy Grip gives you all of that. You almost get to a point where you're feeling like you could truly play first-person shooters, you could play side-scrollers, you could play anything with this grip because of the comfort and versatility it gives you. Now, again, this has already been reviewed. I appreciate that you watched it this far. So, in fact, you should already have one of these. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. Go out. If you haven't got one of these, grab one. Again, this is not sponsored by any of these companies. Like, this is my pure preference here. You need to have one of these in your library, we'll call that, of accessories for the Switch. You know, whether it's for you, whether it's for your kids, whether it's just, just because you need to grab one of these grips. And I'm going to lean on the Satisfy one more, more likely than not. So, Thank you again for watching today. I really do appreciate it. For more great content like this, check us out on ourcommunitynow.com. We also have Instagram, we have Facebook. Check it all below in the links. Like I said, this is a dope t-shirt provided today by High Altitude Apparel and our friend Jonathan. Love you, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Check him out. Check out Satisfy. Check out more channels from Permission to Game. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.